that out of the way, we can go right ahead and talk about our first game, game one of the NBA Finals. It's a highly anticipated finals. You know, it's Kyrie going up against his former team, the Boston Celtics, as well as Chris Stapps going up against his former team with uh, the Dallas Mavericks. So a lot went down in this game. I mean, it was, looking at the final score, it was a blowout and there's really no other way to like to put it. It seemed like the Mavericks in this game, they lost right after uh, the first quarter ended. Chris Stapps went off like from the start of the game all the way up to the finish. And it was really like just the rough start for the Mavericks. They dug themselves up into a really deep hole and they just couldn't figure they just couldn't get out of it i mean the first quarter the final score of the first quarter was 37 to 20. this was the largest deficit in a first quarter in the history of game one of the nba finals like they completely dominated the uh the mavericks in every single facet in the first quarter and the mavericks they ended up they they were rallying like you know they were making efforts to try and come back but it's just ultimately fell short because like you know every single time they would they'd outscore the celtics like um in every single quarter up until like in the second half but it wasn't by much and when they were scoring you know boston would just quickly answer back they needed to be that efficient from the jump and they just weren't that efficient from the jump and that's really what costed them. Now, some of the key players of this game, like for Boston, was obvi- one of one of the key players was Jalen Brown. Obviously, he's your Eastern Conference Finals MVP. He ended the game with 22 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists. He was the leading scorer for the Boston Celtics, shot 7 of 12 from the field, and missed 4 three-pointers. He shot 2 for 6, but, you know, being the best scorer on the team that was winning, you know, doesn't get any better than that. And obviously, as I mentioned before, Chris Stapps, he ended the game with 20 points on 8 for 13 from the field and three blocks along with six rebounds. Those three blocks came early in the first quarter, if I remember correctly. And Jalen Brown, he also ended with three blocks in this game. I didn't put that up there because, you know, I wanted to highlight the rest of his. I probably should have put that up there. It's better to highlight the three blocks than to highlight those two assists now that I think about it. But this was the final score, and part of the reason why the score was so lopsided was because Kyrie didn't really show up in this game. Now, there's a little bit of a of a narrative going around in the um, since the postseason has started. Now, Kyrie is, I believe, now with this game is 0-12 since stepping on the Celtics logo all the way back when he was a Brooklyn Net, and I believe it was in Game One where um he did that against the Boston Celtics after they ended up losing that game and ever since he stepped on uh lucky as they I think that's what they call it he he hasn't won a game against Boston since and the narrative around it is that you know like he now since he stepped on it he's really unlucky because you know how the Boston Celtics like they the leprechaun and like the clovers and like the luck and all of those um little things that go into the logo that they have and it's like ever since they stepped um ever since he stepped on him it's like it generated a bunch of bad luck we also know how spiritual Kyrie is and like you know how you do certain if you do certain things in a certain way it could invoke some bad spirits this that and the other whatever whatever it is that you want to call it but there is some sort of I don't I don't know what's what exactly the right word is. There's some sort of bad energy like there is what it's is what the media is trying to like portray in that situation because it's like him ever since he stepped on him he hasn't won a single game and he hasn't played well against them either. Like he only he shot 6 of 19 from the field. He only had 12 points and he missed every single three-pointer that he took. And if the Mavericks, if they want to make this series somewhat competitive, they're going to need a lot more from Kyrie Irving. And they they had enough from Luka. I mean, 30 points and 10 rebounds is about as good of a game as you can get. But Luka also ended with a career-low one assist. Now, that's, since it is a career-low in the postseason, it's really, it's kind of baffling because that's that was what made Luka... Uh, so different from a lot of the other scoring point guards it's his ability to pass and the Celtics prevented him from being able to do that in an efficient manner so 
they were able to mitigate Kyrie and they were able to mitigate Luka to some extent. I mean, Luka still had 30 in this game, but he had to shoot 26 shots in order to get that 30. So it wasn't like the team, like, it wasn't like the Mavericks were shooting efficiently in this game at all. And as a team, the Mavericks went 7 for 27 from 3. That's 25%. And the Celtics, they made, they went 16 of 42 from 3, which is 38%. And already the the big difference is the three-point difference, and that's really the big difference in terms of uh, offensive production for the Boston Celtics. They were getting a lot more out of their three-point shooters and as opposed to the Mavericks. Now, it's going to be really tough for Dallas to, um, I guess you could say, like sort of find themselves again. It was a long break. I don't really think the break had anything to do with this. the result of this game, however. Like, Again, it was really, like, the biggest problem was the fact that Kyrie didn't show up. And I feel like once Kyrie figures it out, then the Mavericks will be off on a much better foot than they were in this previous game. So the Celtics, they're up one nothing in the series. And the next game isn't going to happen until Sunday on June 9th. So it's going to be a lot of waiting time between every single game. So it gives them it gives them time to come up with a game plan for like how they're going to go into this game, maybe what Kyrie needs to do differently, all those kinds of things. There's going to be talks about it without a doubt in the locker room. And that there's really not much to be said about this game. I mean, it was dominant this it was just the Celtics dominating from start to finish. And again, like I said, they the Mavericks, they were like rallying at certain points of the game, but those rallies ultimately ended up being for nothing. And it's really just the fact that they put themselves in a hole early that they couldn't dig themselves out. And maybe if they would have had a much you know closer first quarter, the result of this game could have been different. And if Kyrie were to play well, the results of the game would also be different. So that's really the big story behind this game. There wasn't really much to follow because throughout most of the game, it was just, you know, a Celtics blowout. And I kind of, I really don't like those games because it doesn't leave me with much, with much to, to talk about, especially when it's like so lopsided as it was. And the final score, it wasn't, it was one of the biggest leads and one of the biggest um, wins in the first game of a final series so there's again it's like it's really difficult to sort of draw stories around it and to talk about the game that was already decided once the first quarter started and so we just wait for game two that's going to happen on sunday see if they can somewhat turn it around and if not then you know they'll still be able to turn it around when they go at home but one of the things that i feel like dallas should avoid is getting in a 2-0 hole because the Celtics have not lost a single road game at all in this postseason and a common trend for the Celtics is to lose in game two so they really this the Mavericks they need to make sure that they can absolutely win game two if they want to have a chance of winning the series in my opinion so that's all that's all that's going to be for the first segment. So now we will go ahead and go into the second segment where I give a quick update on Jonte Porter and his gambling incident because there is an update on it. So I will be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. <laughs> 